Good day all. I hope you're safe and sound. I also hope that we all are safe and sound from the Chinese Wuhan virus. It has created a menace worldwide. We all are suffering because of the Chinese Wuhan virus, perhaps in my perception. It is a virus by itself. Today, at this podium, what I'm doing, I'm on board my vessel. I've got my crew who all are hale and hearty, sound with their families, hale and hearty, protected from the Chinese Wuhan virus. I take this opportunity with my team to conduct the safety lecture on the LSA and FFE. So, I will introduce to my crew. Come here. Take the pictures. How's the Jewish? How's the Jewish? How's the Jewish? How's the Jewish? Good. So you can see the kind of enthusiasm what my people have. And that is the main thing, that is the key to success. To be on board with a happy crew and hail and hearty. So, not to take too much time now, we start with the subject matter. What we are going to do here is we are going to demonstrate all these LSA and FFE equipment, which is also a mandatory as far as the training process is concerned. And we have to keep on upgrading the people for the training perspective. So, first what we talk about is SCBA. Gentlemen, can you please step forward? Can you please step forward? Come here. Take the SCBA, please. Now, SCBA stands for Self-Contained Breathing Apparatus. Yeah? Self-Contained Breathing Apparatus. So, you put it down, please. Yeah, no, put it this way. Yes. Now, few things which we have to see here, which we'll talk about, the things which we need to look after when we are donning the SCBA. The SCBAs are used for not only firefighting, but when you're going down for a rescue of somebody, the person who's a rescuer, he dons the SCBA, and the person who's to be rescued for him, there is an EEBD to evacuate. The SCBA has two modes. One is the demand mode, where when you breathe, the air comes. And second is positive mode, where the air comes constantly. The bottle capacity of this SCBA bottle, as I can see, is 6 liters. The normal calculation is a healthy human being breathes around 40 liters of air per minute. That is, when he is not exerting himself, maybe relaxed or maybe walking slowly like the way I am walking. But if suppose you are climbing a ladder or doing some strenuous work, this 40 liters per minute is not very much applicable. This is just a kind of a guidance. Therefore, open the valve please, open the valve. Up to what uh, level you charge third officer this? 200 sir. 200. So if it is charged to 200 bars, then what is the calculation? Can anybody tell me? 200 multiplied by right, but demand. Cut off the demand. Uh, this is the policy. Cut off the policy. Let's go, let's go. Cut off the policy. So the calculation goes like this, 200 multiplied by 6 is 1200, 
divided by 40, which gives us approximately 30 minutes. But this is just a guideline. It's not applicable when you are exerting yourself. Okay. Don the ACBA, please. Put it opposite. Put it opposite. And this mask should always be stored in this position to protect the face shield of not getting it damaged. Okay? Like this. All right. So, what do you do? Uh, what's your name? Banai. Banai. You hold it like this. Put it this way. Okay? Now, what you need to do is first bend yourself, bend, yitna, bend forward like this, yeah, and check your shoulder straps, tighten them up, pull them down, bend and pull them down. So now the bottle is okay, not slack on your shoulders, right? Okay. Now you tie up the this strap. We need to do some checks here and those checks are to check the whistle, okay? So you open it and then you, once the bottle is charged, you breathe, now close the valve. The valve is closed, breathe. The whistle is working or not? Can listen? Yes. Just yes, tell the person. Tell the person. Okay. Okay. Close this. Okay. Now you breathe. The whistle should come when it comes to the mark. So this whistle test to be carried out. Okay. Now, you have tied up your shoulder strap, you have tied up your waist strap. Tighten up if you can. Tighten up the waist strap if you wish to. You tighten up, don't get nervous. Tighten up the waist strap. Tighten up. Boom. Okay. Now, remember gentlemen, the human face is broadened at here and it gets tapered towards the chin. Okay, so what we do, uh, one person to come and assist me, yes. please. Okay. Now, what we do, no, you take out your mask, uh, Karen. Hold it like this, okay, and put this way, okay. While holding this, first you tight, tighten the chin straps because it has to be tightened on the chin because the chin is tapered as what I spoke earlier. Tight now. Tight, okay? And the last one is this, the head strap, which is passing through your forehead. Okay, tighten up from there. Uh, now open the air, open the air. Okay. okay? Now tighten up the strap, this one, and these ones, and make sure the chin is properly uh, properly uh, you know uh, covered up <coughs> now okay. now wait wait you stay there you're okay now you close the valve close valve okay you will feel the mask will have tendency to collapse on your face on do so just give a thumbs up you getting that you will have a tendency of mask collapsing on your face and okay, open the open there. So, so that means that means the face mask is fully gas tight on the face. The, this test also is to be done. So first is the whistle test. Of course, we check the bottle, how to don it. We do the shoulder uh, strap first, then we do the waist strap, then we do the whistle test, and then we don the mask. We do the air tightness test. Okay, is that clear, gentlemen? Okay, thanks. Take it off. So, this is about the CBA. Speak in English. Okay.
Okay, this is about the CBA. Okay, take it off. Take your time. It's okay, no problem. Take your time. We heard the whistle also going because it just closed the valve and the air is, uh, the, 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 on the gate, the air is uh, getting uh, released. Okay. okay. All right. Put it back. Chief O, come here. That's my chief officer. Chief O, okay. First and foremost, uh, what I want is that all these extinguishers to be color coded. What is a color code for DCP? I'm a color coding. Blue. For water, it's red. For foam, it's yellowish. Yellow. Yeah? Beige or little darker, beige or yellow. And for CO2 it is black. 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 So what I want, uh, you know, all over here, all the color coding should take place. Like here it is yellow. This is white is no good. I want the color coding to take place here, Chief Officer. Yes. Third Officer, okay? Third Officer, you understand? Okay, and black should be here. Now, which one is this? This is foam, as I can see, yellow color, right? Okay, bring this here. Do not fire, just show them how to do it. Demonstrate now. First and foremost, foam is used for which types of fire? It is very effective in the oil fires. Now suppose, Chief, turn around here. Now suppose there's a fire over here. Yeah? How will I fire? I will project this. Now this is not a uh, what do you call this uh, to to release it. It's no no uh, rocket science. There's a safety latch which is to be taken out, and then the plunger is there. We press it. Nothing much, and but. Before that, the hose should be pointing towards the fire. I mean, fire means if there's a third, you please focus on over here. When there's a fire over here, we directly fire on a on a bulkhead or erected surface. So what it does, it flows down from here and cuts off the oxygen supply to the to the fire, the fire triangle. What we know of, clear? Sorry, smothering the fire. Yeah, smothering the fire, smothering the fire, okay. But it is not to be used on any electrical equipment or else you will get electrocuted. Because water inside. Yeah, water inside, okay. Number two, which one is it? DCP, is it? DCP. Now DCP is effective in electrical fire or any solid fire, okay. But the, the advantage of CO2 over DCP is suppose there is a there is an electrical fire and you of course could not find the DCP uh, you could not find the CO2 and you have smothered it with the DCP some sensitive electric or e electronics equipment may get buggered up because of the powder it does not mean that the DCP will not be effective in extinguishing the electrical fire. It will be, but it may bugger up your, your equipment. Instead of that, if you use CO2, that will not damage your electrical equipment end of the day. Okay? All right. So, this is also the same thing. Uh, you see the bottle is charged first. Show, them, uh, show this on the video. The bottle is charged, and uh, then you take out the safety latch, and plunge it onto the fire, respectively. Okay? Okay, put this back. The next one is CO2. The next one is CO2. Now here, CO2, again, for electrical fire, but the only thing which we need to take care that this is the insulated part. When you're holding the hose, you must hold it from here, not, neither from here, nor from here. This is the insulated part. You must hold the hose from here or else you will land up with the cold burns. Yeah? That is the, that is the very uh, the precautions to be taken. And it is the same thing that you take out the latch and when you are firing make sure nobody is near in the vicinity otherwise you will get your uh, you know limbs or some part of your body affected. You should be well clear of it and then you fire onto the, you use it for the fire, the electrical fire, okay? Alright? 
So this is all about the extinguishers. Okay, now we have uh, take out the EBD cheapo. Yeah. Now tell me something. Before EEBD, the old sailors, if there are any person who's old enough to sail, uh, uh, you know, they used to be a synonym to this was Elsa. Has anybody heard about that? Say again, please. Emergency life saving apparatus, Elsa. Emergency life saving apparatus. Now the problem was that. The ELSA was construed to be used for life saving. Okay, so ELSA was same thing, same what we have here EEBD. <coughs> IMO has changed the name. The name has been changed only so that not to have the confusion. What had happened in past, people used to go down for carrying out the rescue because they thought it's emergency life saving appliance. That is the reason the nomenclature, the name has been changed to EEBD. That means emergency escape breathing device. So no confusion. And when do we use this EEBD? Escape. Suppose you go into a tank where there may be gas. Yeah, there may be problem that you may encounter for your breathing thing. So what you do, you hang this onto your forehead part of shoulder and keep it ready that is in case you have to carry out an emergency escape that this is sufficient. How many minutes is that Chief 15 minutes. 15 minutes. So 15 minutes will be sufficient for you to escape yourself from the enclosed space or wherever you are working. So whenever we have any doubt of that the space where we are going to work, there might be a gas pocket. Though we carry out all the gas checks as per the enclosed space entry permit. Okay? And also I'd like to appraise you that the enclosed space entry permits, which is to be filled up for deck or engine respectively, is the due diligence shall be exercised. Finally, when I check, I sign the enclosed space entry permit, I'm going to vet each and everything. And the person who is going to sign, let's say the person who is going to work either in the scamming space or some cargo tank or talus tank, when you are signing, it is your legitimate right to go through it. Okay? Because I'll tell you what, in case of any mishap, this is the only legal document which is produced in the court of law. First and foremost, the lives are more important. This is just I'm sharing with you for your knowledge. So, from now onwards, whenever you guys are signing, I'm talking about let's say pump man, AB, motor man, fitter, whosoever is signing the enclosed space entry permit must go through it because we are all humans. We can make mistakes. Maybe chief engineer friend up, chief officer friend up, or second engineer. Mistake can happen. So this is a teamwork kind of coordination that you can say, okay, second chief can you kindly correct it because the due diligence shall be exercised in these sense. Okay? Alright, so Chief will just demonstrate that, don't open it because can we charge the L sound boards the third? No sir. No. So don't don't use it. Do we have this for the demo or this is the We have the demo sir, that is okay. a demo. This is demo one. Okay, just open it, show them, don't open the, uh, is it seal? Oh, seal. So we can replace the seal? We can replace the seal, yeah. Huh? But if it... Yeah, seal can be... Can you open? The seal can be replaced, or do we have seals on board, right? Chief Yeah. We have extra seals? Okay, then break the seal. Break the seal. Go, go back. Because when you are going to check the officer for your monthly routine, you are going to check the bottle pressure. And for some reason, if it is, switch off. <coughs> okay, no problem. So, take it out. Okay, this is the hood which we are going to don. It's of course simple, 
much simpler than the mobile phones what we use nowadays. We don this on the uh, to cover your head and face and open the bottle, the bottle valve. Take it back. You can hang it on your this part also, see if it is comfortable to you. Because I think that would be much much better. If it is not too heavy. Okay, fine. Like this? Okay, and don the hood. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Will be. It should be able. Yeah. To. Yes. So you need to just take a video probably third and just open the valve and you're on your way to escape. Okay. All right, gentlemen. Thank you for this particular thing. Okay, Chief. Take it out. Now, the next one. What is it? Uh, we have got a resuscitator also here. No. Not it, sir. Can somebody bring the resuscitator? Okay. Now I'll proceed to the next one. That is. Uh, Let's say the this one, the emotion suit. Just take it out. Take out the emotion suit. Now, what is this? The light is flashing. Why? It's activated by C. As Okay. Now tell me, uh, this emotion suit should we wear it with the life jacket or without life jacket? Without life jacket. Who says? With life jacket. With life jacket. Yes, life jacket. This. Okay. How many people? Just swing the camera. How many people say that this emotion suit is to be worn with life jacket? Raise your hands, please. And how many say without life jacket? Raise your hands. Okay. This is to be done with life jacket. Uh, the reason being why, why he asked to turn around there, the reason is that if you come across an emotion suit, you will find somewhere here a pillow kind of thing where you need to pump it, you know, inflate it. Okay. This one does not have. That hold it. That pillow is hardly this size. Now tell me what is the magical thing that pillow does that you don't have to turn the uh, the light jacket? Anybody? Okay. Tell me how many of you are swimmers? How many of you are swimmers? How many people know swimming? Just raise your hand. Okay. Okay, now have you ever seen, you know, now today, India has already uh, made yoga internationally. There is an asana, what we do is Mrita Kasana or dead body asana. Have you ever seen dead body sinking? No, dead body always floats. Yes. Right? Why? Because, remember, in water, the heaviest part of your body is not your stomach, not your limbs, it's the head. And that is the reason when we talk about an emotion suit which for which it is not required to use the life jacket, you will find the buoyancy chamber chamber somewhere here where which one you need to inflate it. So whenever you go, next time home or whenever you're swimming, try this. You lie down straight in the water and put your head down, you'll find that your body will start coming. This is also a key that God forbid something happens to somebody. If you remember, don't get panicked. You put your head down, your body will come up, you will float. Water may come maybe approximately up to here, but you will be able to breathe. That is the reason the buoyancy chamber or the pillow, what I just said, is given over here. But coming to this point over here on our ship, we definitely will have to wear the life jacket. Okay. Now I may ask for some volunteer. Chief, for this fits you. 
if yes, you've done it. Take off your shoes and wear it. Now, there is there are one or two things which we talk about. I need a volunteer to help him. You're taking all the video shots third officer, right? Okay, continuously. How many minutes we have got now? We're done. 25. 25. All right. When it is 30 minutes, let me know because I'll not be able to upload a long lecture. 30 minutes, we stop it, mm. okay? And then we read it to record again. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, after the immersion suit, we'll stop it, most likely. Okay, but make your fingers okay. Now, here, the magical thing what we need to do is, you know, <coughs> wait, wait, don't, don't okay, now you, you go down onto your, uh, your knees. Uh, yeah. Sit, sit like this. Yes. Put your feet straight. No, no. Like this? No. Put your feet like this. Both the feet. Both the feet. Uh, both the legs. Yes. And sit on your haunches. Now, why to do this? <coughs> is to displace the air. Displace the air from your immersion suit. If you don't displace and suppose you jump somewhere, you may get hurt with that air pocket. So what you need to do, you push it like this and uh, yeah. yeah, this way and now you actually zip up should be later. Take out all the air from your body, uh, from your suit. No, don't open so much. You can take off your mask here, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, and, and now you zip it up. Now you zip it up. Now if you want, you can go straight and tap those straps. Okay, so clear gentlemen, uh, let's take a video. Okay, put your put your face uh, uh, the thing on, Chico. Like this. So he becomes an alien now, right? <laughs> All right, sure, thank you. Uh, cut off this, we'll go with the second part. Stop the recording.